When people step into celebrity, they have to get used to the constant attention. From the time Chuck Connors became famous until the later years of his career, he had no problem being in the spotlight. He was loved and adored by many. However, it was this very spotlight that exposed another side of him, one he likely intended to hide from the public eye. After his death, rumors began to circulate about this beloved actor. Apparently, what was behind closed doors was very different from the image he portrayed to the public. These revelations surely left people shocked. Here are some of the revelations that prove Chuck Connors wasn't the man you thought he was. Life as Kevin Aloysius Before we dig into the secrets that were revealed after he passed on, let's get to know who Chuck Connors was before the fame. Most people know Chuck Connors as the charming and rugged man who graced screens in the show The Rifleman in the 50s and 60s, but people don't talk about what his life looked like before this hit show. Before he became Lucas McCain, he was a young man who was extremely passionate about sports. Did you know that before Chuck Connors became a Hollywood star, he was already making waves in the world of sports? Although he later changed his name, Chuck was born Kevin Joseph Aloysius Connors in 1921 in Brooklyn. He didn't talk much about his childhood, but it was said that he grew up in the midst of the Great Depression, navigating life in a hard-working Irish immigrant family. From an early age, Connors showcased remarkable athletic abilities, particularly in baseball. You had to be blind to not notice how athletic he was, and as he got older, he became more interested in sports. He took his time to hone his skills playing sandlot ball, catching the attention of scouts and earning himself an athletic scholarship to prep school. He was a bright kid and with all the opportunities he had, his future was looking bright. His journey continued as he pursued higher education at Seton Hall University, where he didn't just stick to one sport, but excelled in both basketball and baseball, showcasing his versatility and dedication to sports. He was the kind of guy that couldn't go unnoticed on the field as he found a way to stand out in each game. As expected, his talent didn't go unnoticed, and soon after leaving Seton Hall, Connors was signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1940 as an amateur free agent. He had the skills and the determination to be a successful athlete. Nothing and no one could stand in his way. Connors spent over a decade grinding it out in the minor leagues tirelessly pursuing his dream of making it to the majors. Finally, in 1949, he achieved his goal, making his debut with the Dodgers in the major leagues. However, his time in the spotlight was short-lived as he was sent back down to the minors after just five weeks and one at-bat. Despite the setback, Connors didn't let disappointment define him. Instead, he saw it as a turning point in his life. It was this setback that propelled him towards a new path. He found himself in Los Angeles in the early 1950s. Although his major focus was on his sports career, he stumbled into an opportunity that changed his life. While his baseball career might not have panned out as he had hoped, it opened doors to something unexpected, acting. The bustling city was a hub for filmmaking, and Connors saw a chance to try his hand at a new craft. But before he got any major opportunity, he was noticed by a casting director who saw potential in him. He was jokingly acting when the director saw him and felt he would be a perfect fit for the screens. His towering presence and rugged charm made him a natural fit for the screen. And just like that, Chuck Connors, the Hollywood star, was born out of the setbacks and triumphs of his athletic career. He was able to get major roles in the early 1950s, but the role that completely changed his life was his role as the main character in the iconic show The Rifleman. But before he took on the role, he changed his name. He disliked his real name. If you've ever wondered what led him to adopt the iconic name Chuck, you should know that this decision was not merely a random choice. Over the years, several movie stars have changed their names for one reason or the other. Some have changed their names because of their newfound fame, while others just wanted a fresh start. Chuck's decision to change his name was for a different reason. The decision had roots in his earlier life experiences, particularly in his athletic pursuits, notably baseball. As you know, Connors' transformation from Kevin to Chuck began during his time as a professional baseball player. He had a promising career in sports, particularly in basketball and baseball. 
Connors played for several minor league baseball teams in the late 1940s, including the Brooklyn Dodgers farm system and the Chicago Cubs organization. It was during this time that he gained a reputation for his strong presence on the field and his vocal encouragement to his teammates. One anecdote from Connors' baseball days sheds light on the origin of his chosen moniker. As a first baseman, Connors would often call out to the pitcher, urging them to throw the ball to him with enthusiasm. His distinctive catchphrase became, Chuck it to me, baby, chuck it to me. This memorable phrase, coupled with Connors' commanding presence on the field, earned him the nickname Chuck among his teammates and fans. The Rifleman, an image of perfection. When the makers of the show The Rifleman were looking for an actor who would take on the role of the main character, Chuck Connors seemed like the perfect actor for the role. Not only did he look the part, but he had also charmed his way into the hearts of many fans and this role was going to be yet another opportunity to entertain his fans, but nothing prepared him for the expectations that would come with this new role and how it would change the way people view him for life. As soon as the show premiered, TV viewers spent countless hours glued to their screens, watching Lucas McCain take down bad guys with his trusty rifle. At heart of it all was Chuck Connors, the man who brought Lucas McCain to life. Every episode proved that he was made for the role, and no other person would have brought it to life the way he did. First off, Chuck Connors was the epitome of a perfect fit for the role of Lucas McCain. Tall, rugged, with a presence that commanded attention, he embodied the essence of the character. But it wasn't just his physical appearance that made him ideal. It was his versatility as an actor. Connors had this uncanny ability to balance toughness with tenderness, showcasing McCain as a loving father to Mark while also being a formidable force against any threat to their safety. Chuck Connors wasn't just an actor, he was a dedicated professional who took his craft seriously. He understood that to truly immerse himself in the role of Lucas McCain, he needed to be proficient in all aspects of frontier life. So he spent hours practicing horseback riding and mastering the art of handling firearms. This dedication translated seamlessly onto the screen, making McCain's actions feel authentic and believable. His preparation paid off and he was able to bring the role to life. In the show, his character Lucas McCain was a man of few words but immense integrity. He was a widower trying to raise his son in the rough and tumble world of the Old West. What made McCain so compelling was his unwavering sense of justice and his willingness to stand up for what was right, even when it meant facing insurmountable odds. He wasn't just a gunslinger, he was a moral compass in a lawless land. And let's not forget about Connor's performance itself. There was something magnetic about the way he portrayed McCain. Whether he was engaging in a shootout with outlaws or sharing a tender moment with his son, Connors had this undeniable charisma that drew audiences in. You couldn't help but root for McCain to admire his strength and resilience in the face of adversity. Anyone who watched the show would agree that Chuck Connors' portrayal of Lucas McCain was nothing short of iconic. He brought depth, nuance, and humanity to a character that could have easily been one-dimensional. And it's that complexity, combined with Connor's natural charisma and dedication to his craft, that made The Rifleman a timeless classic that continues to resonate with audiences to this day. However, this same role that made him a household name was the same role that made people start seeing him a certain way. There was this image of perfection that was attached to the character Lucas McCain and people expected him to be like McCain in real life. However, Chuck Connors in real life was completely different from the person he was on screens. He was a very different man with struggles, vices, and a whole lot of secrets. Kobe Wow, a science. The man behind the mask. Chuck Connors was much more than just the iconic figure of Lucas McCain from The Rifleman. Behind the wholesome image projected by his character, there was a complex and sometimes controversial man. It will surprise a lot of people to know that behind the good guy image was a completely different man who came with a whole lot of drama, but many of his fans had no idea about what was happening in his personal life. When Chuck Connors was ready for a more serious commitment, he met his wife, Elizabeth Jane Riddell, while he was playing basketball for the Boston Celtics. This connection was electric, 
and it was clear that they both adored each other from the start. Soon enough, Chuck Connors decided that he was going to ask her to marry him, so he popped the question, and they got married in 1948. On the surface, they looked like the perfect couple. They were so in love, and their union seemed like a match made in heaven. But, as the years went by, things began to get more and more complicated for this couple. What started off as a beautiful union turned sour when Chuck began to cheat on his dear wife. While they were showcasing this picture-perfect idea of marriage in public, things weren't as peachy as they looked. Chuck wasn't exactly staying faithful. However, unlike other people who try to keep their extramarital affairs private, Chuck Connors wasn't making an effort to hide his deed. It was said that he would often cheat with his wedding ring on and was seen in public places with different women. One can only imagine how devastated his wife must have been when she found out. Their marriage he lasted for 13 years, and Chuck Connors was said to have been unfaithful for most of those years. Makes you wonder, how did Chuck justify cheating while playing the good guy on TV? Did he feel bad about it at all? These are the questions that make you scratch your head. As news of his cheating got out, Chuck's squeaky clean image took a hit. Fans who thought he was a real stand-up guy had to rethink things. It's like finding out your favorite superhero has a secret side hustle as a villain. Despite their efforts to make the marriage work, Chuck and his wife split in 61, but the fallout from his cheating stuck around like a bad smell. People found it hard to believe that Chuck would do something like that. The revelations about his deeds proved that even the people we look up to aren't perfect. People couldn't help but wonder what drove Connors to betray his wife's trust despite projecting an image of marital fidelity. Was it the pressure of fame, the allure of temptation, or something deeper within his psyche? Who knows, it's one of those things that keeps you wondering. So, Chuck Connors was more than just Lucas McCain. He was a regular guy with issues, just like the rest of us. And while we'll always remember him as the rifleman, his personal struggles remind us that nobody's perfect, no matter how shiny they seem. Although it's still difficult to reconcile the image he portrayed on screens with the person he was in real life, more revelations about him forced people to see him for who he truly was. It was after his death that a lot of secrets about how he lived his personal life surfaced. Aside from the rumors about infidelity, Chuck was said to have used his status and image in the industry to lure girls. Yes, you heard that right. He allegedly had a thing for younger girls. His Hidden Desires There were certainly things about Chuck Connors that made him a great guy, but people couldn't ignore some of the strange choices that he made in his lifetime. One of the rumors that was sparked about Chuck Connors was that he did some bad stuff with younger girls. It was said that even when he was getting older in the 1970s, he didn't seem to stop chasing after younger women, using his fame from being on TV to get them. This sounds very strange and different from the person that people thought he was. While he was being celebrated and applauded for his iconic role on the show, he was busy using his fame to attract younger girls. One of his relationships that seemed questionable was when he married Faith Quabius, who was much younger than him and used to be a Playboy bunny. They got married in 1977, but their union didn't last. They broke up after only three years. It was said that one of things that contributed to the breakup was his alleged infidelity. People say he didn't really care if anyone found out about his affairs. It seems like Connors felt like he could get away with anything because he was famous for being on The Rifleman. People who knew him said he acted like he was untouchable, like nothing could touch him because of his TV character. But this just made him act even more carelessly in his relationships and marriages. He was said to have gotten involved with several younger girls, even in his 50s. What's really surprising is how different Connors' real life was from the character he played on TV. On The Rifleman, he was all about being a great dad and doing the right thing. But in real life, it seems like he didn't follow those values. The allegations about Connors and younger women shows how power and fame can mess with people's behavior, especially in industries like TV where famous people can get away with a lot. Connors' reality reminded people that just because someone is famous or rich doesn't mean they're a good person, and sometimes what we see on TV isn't the truth about who they really are. Even though he did important stuff for TV, it's nearly impossible to ignore the not-so-great things he did, which shows us how fame and power can lead to big problems if they're not kept in check. 
his children felt neglected. After Chuck Connor's death, revelations surfaced regarding his relationship with his children, shedding light on a side of him that was perhaps less known to the public. Reports emerged that his children spoke out about feeling neglected by their father during their upbringing. This showed that Connor's dedication to his career and his personal life, including his womanizing tendencies, may have strained his relationships with his children. Connors' on-screen portrayal as a father in The Rifleman, where he played Lucas McCain, a devoted and caring single father to his son Mark, portrayed by Johnny Crawford, contrasts starkly with his real-life relationships with his children. In the show, the bond between Lucas and Mark is depicted as strong and affectionate, with Lucas consistently providing guidance, support, and love to his son. However, in real life, Connor's relationships with his children were reportedly more complicated. His womanizing behavior, which was well documented, may have contributed to a sense of neglect felt by his children. Constantly on the move due to his acting career and often involved in romantic liaisons, Connors may not have been able to prioritize his role as a father as much as he did his career and personal pursuits. The contrast between Connor's on-screen fatherly image and his real-life relationships with his children highlights the complexities of his personal life. While he portrayed a loving and devoted father on television, his off-screen behavior and the challenges he faced in his personal relationships may have led to difficulties in connecting with his children. It's important to recognize that the public perception of celebrities often differs from their private lives, and Connor's case is no exception. This is not to say that he was a terrible father, but it is clear that his lifestyle may have hindered him from being a better father. Why he was blacklisted Did you know that Connors was not only known for his on-screen persona, but also for his outspoken conservative beliefs? In the predominantly liberal world of Hollywood, Connors stood out as a staunch supporter of conservative politics, aligning himself with figures such as Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, and Senator Barry Goldwater, and he did so boldly and without fear. He was never one to hide his political beliefs, opinions, and preferences. Despite his status as a Hollywood actor, Connors did not shy away from expressing his political opinions, even if they went against the prevailing sentiment in the entertainment industry. He actively campaigned for Goldwater's presidential bid in 1964 and strongly supported the Vietnam War, marching in its favor. You would often find him in the front row supporting the causes he believed in. One of the most surprising aspects of Connors' political life was his friendship with Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev, their bond was formed over a shared love of Westerns, particularly the Rifleman. Connor's gift of customized Colt revolvers to Brezhnev during a 1973 trip to Russia underscored their unlikely friendship. It was said that Brezhnev was beyond elated when he got the gift. The reaction from Brezhnev, as reported by the New York Times, was one of sheer delight. Upon receiving the gift, he reportedly became so overjoyed that he lifted the towering six-foot-six actor into the air, a spontaneous and light-hearted moment that captured the friendship between the two men. That scene painted a picture of two men with similar interests and beliefs, Connors and Brezhnev, showcasing the power of cultural connections to transcend political boundaries. Despite coming from vastly different backgrounds and ideologies, Connors and Brezhnev found common ground through their shared appreciation for Westerns and their respective contributions to the genre. Some even suggest that Connors played a role in facilitating back-channel talks between Brezhnev and Nixon, highlighting his diplomatic efforts despite his conservative leanings. For someone who had an acting career to maintain, Chuck Connor didn't care much about what people would think or say about the company he kept. He stayed close to people who supported similar causes like his and even risked his career to stand for what he believed in. Truth is, Connor's patriotism ran deep and he saw no contradiction between his acting career and his political activism. Unlike many of his Hollywood counterparts, he openly criticized liberal politics and anti-war sentiment. 
It was said that he even went as far as turning down lucrative offers to appear in comedic sketches that mocked Westerns and his iconic rifleman character. He didn't mind losing money if he meant that he would stand for what he believed in. However, Connor's outspoken views sometimes landed him in hot water. He reportedly faced periods of being blacklisted within the industry due to his unwavering conservative stance. Despite these challenges, Connors remained steadfast in his beliefs and continued to advocate for conservative values throughout his life. Clearly, Chuck Connors was not only a celebrated actor, but also a vocal advocate for conservative politics in liberal Hollywood. His friendships, political activism, and unwavering patriotism set him apart from his peers, earning him both admiration and controversy within the entertainment industry. Despite his flaws, Chuck Connors is remembered as a trailblazer in the world of television and film. His contributions to the Western genre, particularly in his role as Lucas McCain, have left an enduring legacy that continues to resonate with audiences today. His portrayal of strong, principled characters helped shape the archetype of the American hero and inspired countless actors and filmmakers. He was a flawed man who certainly knew how to act.